like, how many of you like beautiful people? Do you? Do you like, do you like your feet? This is the same. Do you like your feet? Who is? My recording is short, so I've got two. Oh. That guy there, well, uh, this was years ago. We have a creek down here, Butler Creek. <laughs> yeah. He took me down to. Uh huh. He took me down to the creek. I know the story. Yeah, you know that story. Uh huh. He took me down to the creek, and uh, he said, "You're going in the creek." <laughs> I said, "What do you mean? You're going in the creek." <laughs> One way or the other. <laughs> at that time, you know, well, you, were, you weren't the manager at that time. You told me you were putting me in the creek. And he told me it's your birthday. 
And in Mexico, on your birthday, you go into the creek. And I said, this ain't Mexico. <laughs> and he said, nevertheless, you're going in the water. With your clothes or... Somebody knows the Tenth Commandment, right? Yes, Thou shalt not cut. The Ninth Commandment, shalt not bear what? False witness. The Eighth Commandment, thou shalt not steal. The Seventh Commandment, we skip over that one. That's the goal. Six is not to kill. 
They had broken all the commandments. That's my peanut butter, and you ate every drop of it. I'm getting on the plane tomorrow, and I got bread and banana. And I said, I thank you. And then, of course, that was an illustration of selfishness. That's not the story. I sat down, I was done, and the evangelist who bought the food stood up. And he said, I don't know why, but today I have a shopping list, and I always buy just what's on the list, limited budget. And he said, for some reason today, and he got it. Like what he called it, a gallon? A gallon of? in everyday life. This is from Messages to Young People, uh, page 144. It says, God's work is perfect as a whole because He's perfect in every single part. However, we need. If we decide to be perfect, you know, He commands us to be perfect as we have heaven Father is perfect. If we decide to be perfect, even as our Father in heaven is perfect, we must be faithful in doing little things. We like the big things. 
but we must be faithful in little things. And I really like this part right here. That, that which is worth doing, at all is worth doing. Right. Uh, doing well, I'm sorry. Let me read it again. That which is worth doing, at all is worth doing well. Why should I make my bed if I'm just going to put it you know? <laughs> just, That's right. Well, because it's worth, it's worth doing it well. So, uh, for many years I was a farmer and I had to take care of the farm, of the, of the campos. And that was a battle we sell. But I remember the establishments were doing always work doing it well. Whatever your work may be, do it faithfully. Amen. I would like to invite our sister Sarah. Uh, please tell us a little bit, just a little bit about your ministry and uh, what the Lord has been doing.
Uh, and I'm learning more to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, to listen to him. If I get an impression, just do it. It doesn't hurt. Just do it. So I put it in there, and I get in the car. When I get in the car, there was a woman, and I told God, and I said, God, if you want me to start interacting with her and give her this book, you're going to have to have her ask me questions. And we get into a new conversation. And so she started asking questions. What do you do for me? <laughs> so I told her, well, I hope you transition to a plant-based diet. And I went in, and she looked, she was driving, she turned around and looked at me. Church duties. 
this is an important part of one's training. And in a church, in, in unity with a master's life, it will lead directly, directly to effort for the world without. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we are no islands. Mm -hmm. We need uh, each other. And uh, God established His church. We are a prophetic movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to work in connection with the church. So I say there, um, when we work on the, uh, with the, the guidelines that God has given us, God bless us. Mm -hmm. And I have been learning some of those, um, a little by little, I'm a slow learner, I'm sorry. So uh, I, uh, I've been a public critic for uh, about nine years. And I'm still learning, and I haven't all get it yet. Um, uh, and th in 2021, uh, there was a change of management, and a change of uh, personnel, new, uh, new uh, students, our students took you know, new positions, and some of us left, some came in, and uh, it was a uh, it was a transition. You know, you know how those go. And uh, we were uh, some people at the same time took some vacation uh, because they did, they they had a lot of vacation being saved, so they departed. And we were left uh, just a few of us, very very few of us. And uh, that was in 2021. And uh, I got a phone call. And uh, this lady told me, you know, my daughter is, is ready. And we are, um, she wants to speak to me. Now let me tell you a little bit of the background of this story. So months before this lady had told me she speaks Spanish, I'm from Mexico. Uh, she needed to speak to someone in Spanish, so I picked up the, 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 the phone call. And uh, she had a daughter that was uh, uh, under addictions. She had left home and she was just desperate to find you know, help for her daughter. So she reached out to us and um, so we are talking and uh, she said, what about, what about you? If, uh, you know, if we come over for vacation, I drop her off and then you know, I go back and I left her there. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You know, if you want to, if you want to be success in God's work, you need to work how God works, and uh, He doesn't trick people. Uh, he's, you know, right on, on the, you know, on the face. If you want to follow me, you need to deny yourself, right? And listen, Christ told them, you know, I don't have a place to even lay down my life, my my head. So he was ready up front. He never promised something that he would not get. So I, I said, you know, God does not work like that. God does not work like that. Uh, it's just, you know, we need to tell her. She needs to know what she's coming for. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she needs to, it needs to be her choice. You know, yes. God will never take away your choice. Mm -hmm. That's something for you to exercise. He, God give it to you and you must exercise it. Yeah, he helps us with our struggles, but if we must choose. We must choose. She needs to choose. <coughs> and uh, she was not ready. As well, let's pray. And when she's ready, then God will do the work. It's not us, right? Mm -mm. So this was like three months. Then she called me and she, you know, I pick up the, the phone and she says she's ready. She's here. She wants a change. Something happened. You know, we, we were praying. So she gave me the phone, and we, we talked for a few minutes. And uh, yes, she realized uh, that the path that she was going, she did not like. She was not, uh, she was uh, right. signed out. She could not free herself. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted. And I don't like it, but that's the only thing that I'm thinking. You know, just I want to get high. I want to get high. And 
please, I need help. I said, well, I cannot help you. There is only one that can help you. So we pray, and uh, she was crying. We hang out, and uh, she called back a few minutes later, and with the tears of joy, she told me, we're, I'm coming, I'm coming. They were, coming to they were on their way. Already. They were on the way. They were, they were, 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 were going to talk about that. We are close. Let me talk to your mom. He gave me the phone to, she gave the phone to you know, her mom. She's driving. I'm driving. We are coming. We are from Arizona. We are driving. Right now, it's not a good time. We are just in a transition. There is no people here. We just three of us. I said, uh, I cannot. We cannot take you. <laughs> she say, uh, I'm sorry, I'm driving, I'm coming. <laughs> uh, we're coming. You know, brother, God will help you. But we're coming. I said, no, you don't understand. We cannot. And I hang out. I said, no, Lord, we cannot. And it was raining that day. I went outside and I cried. I said, no, this is too much. I said, no, no, Lord, mm -hmm. I'm not willing. And uh, again, she was ready. That moment, she was ready. She was coming. And we have some of those. You know, they're just, I'm here. Help me. I cannot. So I prayed, we prayed, and uh, I walked to the kitchen. There were some people there, some of my coworkers. I told them, and they were burned out. <laughs> they say, we, we pray, say, we're gonna, we, God's going to help us. Let's do it. And I'm really thankful for my coworkers. So I called back and I said, okay, you, uh, you're coming. <laughs> so she arrived, and it was amazing. That mm -hmm. week, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, three people, you know, try to, you know, make the work, the, the, the program happen, to happen. There was a storm or something, we lost electricity for three days. Now, to have no electricity means not to have water either. <laughs> and uh, so what we're going to do today? Well, we're going to go and collect water from the creek. <laughs> so we put the buckets on the, on the truck, and uh, we drove down the creek, and we are getting water. And I'm talking to her, and I said, how are you, how are you doing? You know, this is what, the third day, fourth day, something mm -hmm. like that. And she, it was just a change of her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, it's been wonderful. We are having devotionals. God is interested in me. Mm -hmm. And we are praying. And God is answering prayers. God, I have never done something like that in my life. Mm -hmm. She starts crying to say, God is interested in me. You know, the very things that we needed and we prayed for, He just answered them exactly how we prayed for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been amazing. You know, uh, Jesus said, told the, the, the Pharisees, the publicans and the harlots will go before you. Yeah, before you. And He's not being the only one. I have a number of experiences that guests, you know, with drug issues, you say, you know, they pray, and when they pray, they pour out their hearts. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not something, they just pour out their hearts. And God answers them, and God speaks to them. You know, a verse, you know, the David just takes hold of their hearts. Mm -hmm. And God, uh, uh, next, gives them an experience. I asked this morning, uh, my friend Leah, she's uh, right there in the picture, and you can see some of my friends there. Uh, I asked her, hey, how is she doing? She said she's married, mm -hmm. she's about to have a baby, and uh, she's looking forward to take her child to Sabbath school. Amen. Uh, they are going to church, or are they trying to go to church? Her prayer life is good, you know, that, that's something that you know, she is staying on her. Mm -hmm. the, she can pray and God will answer. I remember that. She's in you know, a state that with her. Mm -hmm. And you might not see the whole change, you know, the first time when they were, you know, 21 days they come. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, for her, it was the prayer. And uh, the Lord is still working in her heart. 
And I'm really thankful for her, for what she does for you know, people that many times we don't have. We see them without hope. Mm -hmm. But uh, for God, nothing is impossible. You need to remember. You need to remember. God, for God, nothing is impossible. However, sweet God, I, I really like this. I really, really like this. All who engage in ministry are God's helping hand. Mm -hmm. They are co workers with the angels. Rather, they are human agencies to whom the angels accomplish their mission. Mm -hmm. Angels speak through their voices in word by their hands. Mm -hmm. And the human workers, cooperating with heavenly agent, agencies, have the benefit of education, their education, their education. angels' education, yeah. and their experience. Mm -hmm. As a means of education, what university, tell me, what university course can equal this. Yeah. Do you know any? I don't. I learned this by doing canvassing. I think uh, Ivan is coming. I really saw this in canvassing. And uh, we are angels working, you know, having our their experience is yeah. It doesn't equal any, any other post. Mm -hmm. I want to invite uh, my friend uh, Samuel. And, uh, Everybody thankful to be here this morning. Amen. Now, uh, before we begin, I'm just going to have a word of prayer, uh, like God's Spirit may be with us. Uh, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, as we uh, do this small issue, respond like we pray to be a savior of life to life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, even before we get into the spotlight, I was I was really impressed with the thought that I believe it's really important for us to take into consideration. Now, who here, by show of hands, believes that this is God's institution? This public creek, this institution? Amen. Amen. Now, who here also believes that God's Spirit is here present in this place? Amen. Amen. Now, this enclosure that we're currently in, uh, what is it called? Convention Center. I'll say again? Convention Center. Okay, Convention Center. Now, this is currently being used or housed as the sanctuary. Right. This is the sanctuary. And because this is the sanctuary, there is a level of due reverence that we need to manifest when in the sanctuary. Does that make sense? Yes. And again, this is not to be an attack or an indictment upon us, but unfortunately there has been a level of reverence that we have not manifested in this sanctuary. Yes. Now, who really wants to come away from this experience with a blessing? Amen. Now, I'm going to read uh, just a few statements from a chapter called Behavior in the House of God. Who has heard of that chapter in volume five? volume 5? Yes, I would really encourage everybody to read this chapter. All right, so this is on page 492. It says, now notice these words. It says, when the worshipers enter the place of meeting, they should do so with decorum. It says passing quietly to their seats. It says common talking, whispering, and laughing should not be permitted in the house of worship. It continues. Either before or after the service, 
So even when the service is done and, you know, the tendency is to chit-chat in the sanctuary, we should actually take those things outside. So as far as is possible, as we are here during the, these next few hours, we really want to reverence this sacred place. Amen. It says, ardent active piety should characterize the worshipers. Now lastly, this says when the minister enters, it should be with a dignified mien. As Solomon, it says, he should, uh, he should bow down in silent prayer as soon as he steps into the pulpit. Amen. What an impression this will make. There will be solemnity and awe upon the people. Their minister is communing with God. Now, as far as the messages that we are hearing, are we really interested in hearing a person or are we really interested in hearing God? Yeah. Hearing God. It says, there will be a solemnity. It says, he is committing himself to God before he dares to stand before the people. Solemnity rests upon all and angels of God are brought very near. So when we leave this time, we want to say that God's presence was here and that we literally felt the, 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 the presence of the heavenly angels. So in order for this to happen, we really need to reference this place. We really need to reference this place. All right, so... All right, so the ministry that the Lord has given to my wife and I, it's called Glad Times 3 a.m. So the Lord impressed this upon my mind, uh, say, back in about 2014, uh, before my wife and I came together. And uh, it's a ministry that is that is essentially kind of taken off uh, in around the year 2020. So especially uh, in the COVID era, this is when a lot of people started to do a lot of work online. And it's definitely a meeting that we have uh, sought to take advantage of. All right, this is a picture of my wife and I, and it's uh, currently just the two of us. You know, a lot of times when I was uh, still single, and I would tell people about the mission by the time 3 a.m., I would say that it's myself and a brother named Michael. And, and, and they would uh, be curious as to who this individual was, but they didn't realize that I was talking about Michael, the, the great prince. Yes. Mm. yes, and he's still there. Yes. Amen. He's still here. Uh, so what this is right here, the, um, we're going to go through a number of series that we've done at different churches. So this is a series that we did call, uh, uh, called uh, The Law of the New Kingdom. This is a series that we did at a church called State Line. SDA. Now, who here has heard of State Line SDA? Now, this is a church that is not too far from here, and we did this series a couple of months ago. This is also on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, this is a series, a revival series that we did. This is a particular message called The Alpha and Omega. We did this at a church in Minnesota. Uh, this is a series that we actually just did in Phoenix uh, last month. And uh, this message was entitled, The Cry of Dark Midnight. The Cry of Dark Midnight. So uh, a lot of what we do, we travel to different churches and ministries, uh, things of that nature. We do uh, weeks of prayer, revival series, even full-blown event, uh, evangelistic uh, campaigns. Now, if we're not traveling to a church, we do a lot of recording at our home studio. And this is one of the series uh, that we did at our home. It's called Dred Scott and the National Sunday Law. This is a very, very powerful series that I would really encourage, uh, as you have opportunity, to please go and watch. This is Dred Scott and the National Sunday Law. Uh, in addition, we also collaborate with other ministries. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Out of the Cities Ministries with Mark Brennan and his family. Mm -hmm. Some of us have heard of it. Uh, we collaborated with them uh, a couple of, uh, yes, a couple of months ago. Uh, and it's not just myself, so Erica does presentations as well. This was a nat natural remedy demonstration uh, that she did in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Now, besides uh, these different uh, things that we do, we also travel to different events. So uh, one of the events that we went to was uh, GYC. Anybody ever heard of GYC? Yes. Yes, GYC. So even though GYC is, you know, a time where you can get spiritually uplifted, uh, it's also a great place to network. A great place to network. You know, because even though you're seeking to do the work of God, if nobody knows what you're doing, is it really going to be of any benefit? It's not really going to be of any benefit. So we really wanted to get the word out there as to what we were doing, so by God's grace, we went to GYC. And this was the booth that we had. Uh, it was very, very simple, but by God's grace, we were able to gain a lot of traction 
and uh, get, get some exposure. Now before the actual uh, the uh, GRC conference began, uh, they had a pre-conference where they were doing evangelistic work in the community. Canvassing and different things. I don't know if anybody knows the McClovers, Gabriel and his wife, the McClovers. Uh, so they came down and, and they cooked. You know, it's funny. When, uh, when we were there, uh, I love making biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, when we were there, uh, Brother uh, Gabriel, he, he tends to be very skeptical of men uh, cooking, because oh. usually we as men uh, can't cook very well. And so uh, we cooked for the, the whole program, uh, Erica, myself, and everybody loved it. And so uh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right, in addition, this is with us uh, going out canvassing. I'm pretty sure there's some people in here uh, that we might uh, recognize. Uh, uh, this young woman, she works at Washington Hills, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's a brother named Darrell Conway. Anybody know who that is? Darrell Conway, uh, literature evangelist uh, director. And so there was a lot of us. Um, I think there was maybe 25, 30, 30 campuses, something like that. And we also did some work in the community. So this was uh, us going out into the community uh, to help the homeless and do various things. And then eventually the GYC conference uh, began. Uh, this is, well, who was at GYC, this past GYC? My show of hands. Amen. Uh, these are some friends. Uh, a brother named uh, London Lee. He used to work at Washington Hills. Uh, he's currently in California pastoring. It's another brother uh, named Gerard. Uh, we spent some time with some friends there. Uh, they actually run a ministry called um, City. City. City, City Exodus. City. I don't know if you if, if, if guys ever heard of that. City Exodus. So we spent some time with them. And uh, this is Erica doing some video editing. Yeah, this is a picture that we took. Nice rainbow. And, um, and, that, and that is it. So uh, this is our donation info. Really strongly communicate. In order for us to do this work, uh, we 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 are very thankful for the support that we get from those who watch the channel. You know, because there are a lot of not not just uh, myself and my wife, but there are many ministries that need support. And in order for these ministries, in order to do the work that they need to do, we have to give our means uh, to help them to do the work that God has called for them to do. And don't get me wrong, um, I know that a lot of these ministries, you know, Willow Creek as well. Uh, providing different services for the community, you know, different industries. But we as God's people have an obligation to contribute to the forwarding of the work of the Lord. Now this is something else. Does anybody know what percentage of the church actually returns a faithful tithe offering? Does anybody know? About 13%. About 13% of the church pays a faithful tithe offering. Does anybody know how much the General Conference of Sunday Adventists receives in tithe every year from that 13%. Mm. 15 billion. About 14 billion. Billion. So about 14 billion dollars the church receives in tithe every year. Now mind you, that's just of the 13% that are paying the faithful tithe. Mm. So in actuality, if the church is paying 100% of tithe, how much uh, money will we have just in tithe? So about $140 billion, give or take. Now, is that a lot of money? Yes. Now, could you do a lot of mission work with $140 billion? Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. So we as God's people, we have money that we simply are using and devoting to other means. Mm -hmm. So we're buying 70-inch uh, plasma screen televisions. You know, we're, we're, we're spending, you know, $300 on a product purse and, and stuff like that when we could be funneling this into the work of God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What did you have anything? Um, and one of the things that we are working for, so when we're not, um, you know, um, ministering at different churches, and I really do enjoy our opportunities of visiting different places because we get to um, talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. You know, a lot of people, you know, go through things and they uh, appreciate uh, the ministry that we're doing. And then we also come in contact with a lot of people who are sick and things like that. So we have opportunities if we can to bring them to our home or we may go, you know, to their home to work with them. And so we are looking to um, establish a place similar to a 
Buffalo Creek in terms of our outpost um, facilities where we are in our general locality. And so uh, just encouraging that we would continue to propagate this work in a lot of places. Amen. Because a lot of places need it. There's a lot of people who are sick. And a lot of people, you know, this is, you know, Sarah was mentioning, you can, there's many different ways and means in which you can be able to share the gifts that God has given us as Seventh-day Adventists uh, to others. Because the world is definitely taking advantage of it. They're taking advantage of this work that God has given us. And they're propagating it mm -hmm. in many ways. Yeah. And they're getting funded doing it too. And, and even more so, us as God's people, we serve a living God. Amen. God is for us to share this with um, everyone we can. Amen. Tell us the name of your facility. Yeah, so um, some of these things are still in their incipient stages. Uh, but we do have a website. It's called gladtimesleam.org. Uh, we have some information here that we're going to get to everybody. Uh, so we have some rent cards, business cards, and uh, some bookmarks that we want to make sure that everybody gets. And so um, I believe uh, Erica had named the sanitarium uh, Cherry Creek Sanitarium. Amen. So that is going to be the name of our uh, health facility. But uh, by God's grace, we pray that this was a savor of life unto life. Amen. Amen. Thank
was at an apartment and I was having a really dry day, so like I didn't have much books out. And I was like a little discouraged. So, but um, I knocked at this uh, apartment door and this guy opened the door and he was like, I showed him the first book and um, it was such a surprise. Uh, piece. And he's like, oh, this is uh, this is Jesus, right? This is a religious book. And I was like, yeah, it's a religious book. And uh, he's like, look, I don't I don't need this stuff. I'm uh, I get high all the time on my drugs. I drink alcohol, and um, Jesus is not gonna help. Me. And um, so, and he also said that he didn't have any uh, money to help. So. Um, he, he was about to close the door, and I was like, wait, sir, uh, I, gave him, I gave him a s smaller Steps of Christ, uh, it's called Hope and Happiness, and um, I told him it could help me with stress and lunch problems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. And he was like, thank you so much, you know, I'm going to read this book, and um, it kind of changed the whole attitude of the rest of my day, because I realized that people actually need the books that we have. Yes. It could be, it could be a, a small little pamphlet, you know, the little um, steps of Christ. It could save a soul. So. Amen. Amen. Um, I always give this testimony to have this one specific testimony when I was in the gym. Uh, I was dropped off and um, I encountered this person and um, I canvassed him. He spoke a little bit, and I showed him this book. It's called Church and Feast, called Step to Christ. And he, he just like he just opened up to me. He was like, you know, I've been praying for somebody. You know, I actually need peace in my life. And it was really beautiful to see people that are actually like sincerely seeking for the Lord. And um, it's really encouraging and a healthy Christian right there, especially you now because sometimes it gets really, really hot outside, and we get we get very, very, very um, discouraging. But you know, the, the Lord blesses them. I have another testimony. Um, it, it was two weeks ago. I was uh, I was doing businesses because I, I like it because you see a lot more people and a lot more interaction. So um, my leader uh, dropped me off and I got kicked out of a. Uh, a BMW dealership and a Walmart. <laughs> and then I, I was walking by and uh, there was this Panda Express and I canvassed this place three times already. So I was like, I don't think I'm going to canvass that place again. Because three times, you know, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> Step right in there again. But the Lord impressed me to go back to that Panda Express and uh, I, wa I walked inside and uh, I canvassed the guy in front. He said, okay, let me bring the manager. Normally, when they bring the manager, uh -oh. it's, uh, they're kind of done. <laughs> but I uh, started canvassing the manager, and uh, I canvassed him uh, with a search of peace. And he said, wow, you, you're the same girl that came here last time. And my wife got this book. and." Uh, and she's been reading it every morning, and uh, we uh, we stopped fighting, and my whole family has changed because of this book. And uh, then he he went to his uh, friend, and he started showing him the book. He's like, "You're gonna you're gonna have to read this book. I'm gonna make you read this book. So it's gonna change your life." <laughs> and um, the man got the book, and. Uh, when I walked out of that Penn Express, I you know I also I realized that people are actually you know getting changed by these books. You know, normally when you you go to a person and you give them a book, you probably are never going to see them again. Mm -hmm. But I got to see this person again, and I got to see what the book has done. Amen. 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 Yeah, no, no, there's a lot of experiences that you have. There's actually like a few times where people actually end up praying for me. And you know, usually like when I notice people and I notice that they're like touched by the Holy Spirit, I usually ask them, you know, can I have a prayer for you? Or you know, something simple like that. 
And usually there's some of them who say no, but some of them are pretty open. So yeah, 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 thank you for me. And um, basically I just pray that, you know, Holy Spirit show their purpose in their life for that person. Because you know, that's what people are looking for, actually. You know, they're looking for what their purpose is in life. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, I speak to them. They say, you know, I don't know what to do with my life. Um, I'm going to find a lot of people that are abusive and stuff like alcohol, drugs, you know, and stuff like that. And um, it's really powerful, especially I gave this woman a great controversy. I met her yesterday. And usually I, we donate books from around, you know, 15 to 25 dollars. But I was so impressed to give her the book for free. She said that she had an encounter with the Lord. And um, she said she'd been praying for somebody to come to her like me. And I was like, I was so touched by that situation. I was like, you know what, ma'am? Usually I give this book for this amount, but I'll give it to you for free. And she was so touched by that situation. Um, you know, I, I prayed with her. And uh, she was actually just heavily considering actually coming over here. I gave her the contact information. And um, yeah, it was, it was a blessing, you know. She allowed me to pray for her. Yeah, it's, it's really nice when you see people like that, that you know, they're praying for somebody else.